In this video I'm going to show how I converted my Sony DSC H9 camera to shoot infrared and hybrid infrared visible light photos. Uh, this will work on any Sony camera uh, that has the night shot mode. Uh, if you've seen the night shot mode, it films in infrared but it turns on software that makes the image all green like uh, an infrared that you'd see on a television show or a movie and it also boosts the gain and limits the exposure so that it's no good to use in the daytime or in bright light it'll only work in the dark so here I'm going to show you how I change this camera so that it'll shoot infrared uh, whenever you like regardless of the conditions and give you full control over the exposure the aperture and the ISO value these are the locations of the screws that let you remove the back panel. There's two screws that are hidden. One is hidden behind the LCD. That covers up the point that attaches the LCD to the main board of the camera. The other one is hidden inside the flash. There's the LCD one. When you flip up the flash, you'll see one in the corner there on the right hand side. The screws don't have to come out in any particular order. The only thing you have to pay attention to is the screw that's inside the flash is a different thread than the rest of them. So put that one aside to make sure you don't mix it up and put it somewhere else. The only tools you should really need to do this is a precision screwdriver set, a strong magnet to put all your screws on so they don't roll away, and some small pliers or little medical tweezers just something that you can use to grab a hold of small parts. So this is that screw behind the LCD. There's a little plastic door that that screw holds down and behind the door you'll see a rectangular connector with a flexible circuit and that's what connects the LCD screen to the rest of the camera. If you have a small set of pliers you can grab onto that and pull it away. Uh, make sure to pull straight away from the board. Don't pull it at an angle because you may damage the connector. Here you can use a small flat screwdriver to begin prying the back of the case off the front of the case. Once you get it started, don't immediately pull it away because there's another connector you'll have to remove. It's on a fairly long ribbon cable and it's not difficult to remove just with your fingers. Here I'm removing the USB cable plug on the side. This is a proprietary Sony plug. It's kind of a strange shape, but it's only one screw holding it on and a, a single ribbon cable. Uh, the screw is different from most of the case screws. It's like the one that was in the flash, so just put it with the flash screw and you won't mix them up with the others. don't immediately try to pull the ribbon cable out. Many of these ribbon cables have a lock on them which I'll show in just a minute. So if you look closely at the white connectors there's a little grayish black latch on top that you'll have to pry up with your thumb. Uh, just be a little gentle with these. They're only plastic. They're not made to be used really repeatedly. Looking around the board, you'll see there's a few more. Uh, some of these have the little latches on them. Some of them are just pressure fit and you can pull right out. 
we'll have to disconnect all of these in order to get to the little micro switch that we're removing in order to make this into an infrared camera. Here I'm removing the ribbon cables from the main board. These are delicate, but if you find one that doesn't have the little latch on it and it's a little tight, you can use a small pair of pliers or even use uh, your screwdriver just to pull on it. Just make sure that you're using even tension across the whole connector and not pulling too much on one edge or the other. There's a large flat ribbon cable coming into the side of the board on the right hand side. Uh, if you look closely it folds into the hand grip. It's easiest just to open the latch on this so that later when we remove the board from the camera you can pull it straight out. There's another ribbon cable right beside where my pliers are there. Uh, it also folds into the camera near the top. I'll leave this one until the board has been disconnected. It'll make it a lot easier to remove. There's only a single screw holding the main board into the camera. It's in the lower right hand corner of the board. You can remove this. It's a little different from the rest of the screws that you've already removed. So it's not very likely you're going to mix this one up. Just put it off to the side. The other side of the main board is held with a little tab. Uh, in order to get the main board out from under this, you'll have to pull the viewfinder out. It's just snapped in. Uh, if you wiggle it side to side, it'll come out fairly easily. This is the small upper ribbon cable and the lower one. Uh, the lower one is a lot easier to take out. The upper one is fairly tight. Uh, if you use uh, long flat pliers that put an even pressure, it should come out easily. Or if you're gentle, you can use your fingers. Try not to fold the cable or pinch it because you can damage it. So only two more things to remove now. The viewfinder connector, which is fairly easy. It's just a pressure fit. And there's one more white flat cable that comes into the back of the main board. It's also a pressure fit and it comes out very easily. Here I'm going to give a close-up view of the switch we're going to be removing. This switch lets the camera know when the infrared hot mirror has been pulled out of the way. It's held down with a single screw and is connected with a ribbon cable. It's those two small wires that come off of the underside of the ribbon cable. I've already cut these two wires right here. You could probably leave the switch where it is after breaking this connection, but it's simple enough to remove so I took it out. Here's a close-up of that switch after it's been removed. You can see the short piece of ribbon cable that's still left. Now you can reassemble the camera, being careful not to damage or scratch any of the ribbon cables. Once your camera is reassembled, you can put the batteries back in and get started. Uh, the night shot switch on the side will now swap your camera between visible light and an extended infrared mode where you'll be able to see visible light as well as the infrared spectrum on your camera. You can see the difference here. In visible light, there's more of a green tint because of the fluorescent light I'm using and in infrared mode, it goes more pink. In order to shoot true infrared with no visible light coming through, you can use unexposed developed film as a filter. This unexposed film 
will block visible light but allows infrared light to pass through. The unexposed but developed film will appear dark brown, almost opaque, when in visible mode. But once switched over to infrared, you will see the infrared lightness of objects around you. The color won't be true color because we can't see infrared, but this will give you uh, a good idea of the reflectiveness and transmission of infrared light through whatever you happen to take a picture of. These three photos show a, a visible light photo with the infrared mode turned off, a visible and infrared hybrid which has the infrared mode turned on but without the unexposed developed film in front of the lens, and finally an infrared photo with the infrared mode turned on as well as the developed but unexposed film in front of the lens.